This program is brought to you by Emory University. This is a little bit different in terms of presentation because this is less about my own individual research and more about some institutional research that really transpired over the course of last spring semester and even a little bit before then. It's about a report that uh, I put together with um, some Emory faculty and administrators to the Mellon Foundation, thinking through the kind of future of the monograph as we move towards more and more digital publication. Uh, the Mellon Foundation which is, I think probably everybody in the room knows, is one of the major funders in the humanities, uh, is very interested in the future of uh, digital, a future of publication in the humanities. They have several interests. They're interested in the future of scholarly publishing, obviously, where are humanist scholars going to publish their work in the future. They're very concerned about the future of university presses. University presses are under all kinds of pressure financially, both because of uh, lack of support from their institutions, but also because of the shifting landscape of publishing uh, in the same way that trade publishers are under all kinds of pressure. And you're probably familiar with that in some ways. They're interested in exploring the digital publication of monographs. What does it mean to take uh, the monograph, which is really the central uh, building block of scholarship in the humanities and move it into a digital format. Uh, and then they're, as part of that, they're interested in exploring a shift to a model of university funding for monograph publication. And what does that mean? If you think about it right now, most monographs and most books <clears throat> are paid for through purchases. Uh, we publish a book, a university press publishes the book, and it recoups its publishing cost by the, through the purchases made by libraries and individuals who are going to read the book. Uh, what Mellon wanted to think about was what would, what would it mean for us to move to a model where many if, or most of the costs of publication were borne by the universities, uh, the university where the scholar is employed up front, and then the monograph could be published in an open access form that might be available all over the globe for, uh, for no cost, and then possibly available on print on demand. And Mellon has been floating this model for uh, about a year and a half, thinking through how this might work, what it could look like on the ground, and what the implications of that were. Uh, so Mellon commissioned two different studies. Um, it commissioned a study from Emory College that was really about a faculty orientation toward those questions. How would humanist faculty respond to such a model? How would it work for them? What are their questions, concerns? Are they even interested? And then they also commissioned a joint study between the University of Michigan and the University of Indiana. Both of those universities, uh, again, as many of you know, probably have university presses. And so those studies were really also about the university presses and thinking through what that would look like on the university press side. So those are it's a very different uh, study, although it was interesting because we were both going at the same time, so every once in a while I would get on the phone with the leaders of that study and we would compare notes. And then during the same period, Mellon was making a series of grants to university presses to build new publishing infrastructure. Part of this of Mellon's interest is in thinking through what do university presses need on their end to be able to publish materials, publish monographs in a digital format. Uh, and so they've been making a number of different grants, and I just took a couple screenshots of a few things they, that hit the headlines while our working group, sort of as our work group was meeting, about every three weeks there'd be a new headline in the Chronicle Inside Higher Ed. Um, this is one summarizing a number of different grants to Michigan, to Minnesota, um, this is the Minnesota project, which is really a very interesting project um, with Matthew Gold at CUNY. Uh, they're interested in building a platform for monograph publication that would be a lot like the Redux platform in terms of allowing for annotation and updating and things like that. They've also uh, awarded, Mellon has awarded a big grant to Stanford University Press for digital publication books, and they're working on their first 
their first project. And so Mellon is kind of seeding the field with a number of different projects, none of which are exactly like each other, but all of which are trying to kind of ask new questions about what could digital publication of long form scholarship look like? How could it be disseminated? What kind of things need to be in place in order to make it, to make it happen? So the Emory College Working Group, we met for about six months uh, over the last academic year, some months more, some months less. Uh, it was made up of 11 humanities faculty. Um, I was there as the Executive Associate Dean of Emory College at the time before I was deposed. Um, uh, the co-director, it was just that was a joke. Um, <laughs> I left out of my own volition. Uh, Alan was there uh, in multiple roles, including uh, the co-director of, of ECDS. Lisa Macklin, who's here, uh, was on the, in the group as the director of scholarly communications for the library. The faculty included a number of different department chairs, as well as uh, and Pamela Scully was there, actually, uh, on behalf of CFD and women's studies, whatever other hat she was wearing at the time. We also had, um, very interestingly, some recently tenured and even a couple of assistant professors who were in the room uh, who you know, had very different perspectives on some of these questions. And uh, it, I, you know, I think I can say this, it was actually a lot of fun. Um, uh, the challenge and the excitement about this set of questions was that it kept veering off into everything from you know, wither the humanities to wither tenure um, and, and kind of every place in between. So it was a fun conversation that we kept having to corral back into the questions that Mellon really wanted us to, to wrestle with. Um, but I, I had a good time. Uh, we brought in a couple of outside consultants, including the director of UNC Press. And then we also brought in an editor from Yale who works in art and architecture in part because the questions of dealing with images, as I'm sure Jesse can tell you, and permissions and those kinds of things become uh, especially thorny when you start to get into visual, visual materials. And then we drew a lot on kind of internal consultants, people from uh, ECDS and the library and elsewhere who could speak to some of the issues from their own perspective. We did readings, we had discussions, we did all the things that a working group uh, you would expect to do. We called it a working group because the point of a working group is to do something and then disband. And so we did something, we wrote a report, and then we disbanded as opposed to a committee, which as we know is forever. Um, uh, so uh, let me tell you a little bit about what the report says, and I'll tell you at the end where you can find the report. One of the things, we talked about the future of the monograph. Again, really the central mode of scholarly communication in the humanities. And uh, the, one of the, the things we wanted to do in the report was actually to reaffirm its importance, the monograph, long form scholarship, as we, which is we started to talk about. And what we talked about in the, uh, for a long time was this idea that for a while, at least, maybe the foreseeable future, maybe even beyond what we can foresee, the monograph is gonna be, exist in a continuum. Uh, the print monograph actually functions very well for many scholars and even and many presses and it's probably not gonna go away entirely. Uh, at the same time, because of economic pressures, we can see, this is the second bullet point, that in the near future, many books that now appear in print might appear in digital editions uh, that actually look a lot like their print editions. You know, not just PDFs, but maybe not too much more than PDFs uh, as a way of, of being able to disseminate them more easily and more cost effectively. The third bullet point, uh, we can also imagine long form scholarship that will take advantage of the digital format. Uh, we had a scholar of film and media studies in the room with us and she was talking about how, what it would mean for her work if she could embed film clips or video stills much more easily. Uh, and so you can think about, there are, there are certain things you can do in a digital medium that you can't actually do on the page. Think of it as kind of like, this is the, the book plus. Uh, and then the fourth digital, the fourth point is we can imagine, and in fact we have many examples here in ECDS and you've been hearing about some of these examples uh, today, uh, digitally published long form scholarship that actually is not suitable for print publication, right? That can't, couldn't be really reproduced in print. And this is not to say that everything in the future will fall into one of these four buckets, but the, the report tries to sort of spell out that this move into the digital for the monograph for long form scholarship isn't going to mean all one thing. And in fact, we imagine a kind of a, a period of in, increased and intensifying variegation and that that's, that's actually quite exciting, uh, although also confusing. Um, we came up with a number of conclusions. 
uh, most of which we feel strongly about, some of which we feel less so. Uh, here's a, a brief summary. Um, one of the things we really stress is uh, we wanted to put as a group a high premium on long form follow scholarship. We don't think not only, we don't, it's not only that we don't think the monograph is going away, we don't think it should go away. Uh, that actually, you know, the monograph and long, you know, long thinking that humanity scholars do is really important. We talk about that. Um, it's probably not something we need to convince many people of in this room, but it's important that we uh, wanted to make sure that that was, uh, was put forward. Uh, we did end up endorsing a university model of publication, which is something we thought about uh, and thought about how it could work. And we don't think, again, it will necessarily be something that would be used in every publication, but uh, we can see real values in that model. We talked about the period of increased variegation in humanities publication, which is what I just talked about a second ago. Uh, and we ended up strongly endorsing open access publication for monographs, uh, which is very interesting, uh, something that we would, you know, we would not have agreed on at all at the beginning of this process. Um, and you know, some of the values of open, open access publication, I think, uh, were very uh, eloquently endorsed by Abdu's uh, presentation about the value of being able to disseminate scholarship globally uh, and instantaneously uh, one of the scholars in the room, a junior a assistant professor in religion, works on Islam in Indonesia and elsewhere and talked about the advantage of being able to make his work available to the people who he's writing about and kind of the ethical imperative of doing so. We talked about if we were going to implement such a model, how would it work? And we said, well, we think faculty, this should be open to faculty of all ranks. Uh, it was interesting, at various moments, people were proposing that uh, it should be only open to junior faculty, and then other moments we said, well, no, junior faculty should be protected from this, and it should be only open to senior faculty. We finally said, you know what, open it up to everybody, and let, let's figure it out. Um, and we talked about the need to ensure, as we move to these kinds of digital publications, the high quality of scholarship. We also talked about concerns we have about preservation, preservation and discoverability. It's really important that this work be out there and be available to the people who need to read it. Uh, we, talk, we talk about costs and the uncertainty about costs. The, another study that Mellon did about, about, about this work at the same time is a cost study of what this would look like, and that's still, uh, still being talked about. And then we talked about how any shift like this requires socialization. That is, we had just spent six months talking about all these issues together, and in order for this to actually work, more people need to be brought into this conversation. That's one of the reasons I'm here and, and other places talking about this. We made a set of recommendations for how this would actually work. I won't go into this detail, uh, but we kind of laid out a model for how funding like this could, could work. Uh, one of the things that we stressed was that is, if the university is going to be funding the scholarship more directly, the university needs to play a, a bigger kind of role in setting terms of how the scholarship is produced and disseminated and kind of making sure that the book contracts do the things that we uh, we expect and that making sure that university presses uh, uphold the kind of standards of quality that we think university presses should uh, uphold. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to move forward and just talk a little bit about what's happening right now. So we wrote this report, like so many committee reports, working group reports, no matter what you call them, what was happening to it? Well, the first thing we did is we sent it to Mellon, uh, which is a very powerful, important foundation. Uh, we've been sharing it at various meetings. Uh, Lisa has actually been doing yeoman's work in this respect, presenting it at different meetings uh, uh, sponsored by uh, the Association for Research Libraries, for instance. It's being talked about in different meetings. Uh, and it's interesting. I hear about people talking about it, and everyone's kind of hear, oh, yeah, well, you know, I heard about your report at this meeting at ACLS or something like that. Um, it's going to be published in the Journal of Electronic Publication 2016, and right now, thanks to Lisa, it's actually available on Open Emory, so if you want to go and download it there, you're, you're welcome to do so. If you look under my name, you'll find it there. If you just send me an email, I'm happy to send you the link. The other thing that's happened is that we're trying to continue the discussion of these issues. We're inviting some speakers engaged in digital publishing over the next semester. Nicholas Bausch, who's the kind of guinea pig for the new Stanford project, is coming uh, in late January, early February, uh, thanks to Susan in part, Susan Gaviardi who's here, 
And then we are in the process of discussing with Mellon in the very delicate way that one discusses with Mellon uh, a next grant that would be about building some Emory research infrastructure that would be geared toward helping faculty understand how to navigate this new, uh, this new environment. Uh, we're talking particularly about how can we provide support for faculty who might be interested in exploring digital pathways for publication but don't really know what that entails and, and kind of especially kind of serving as a liaison between the faculty and the university presses. Um, so it's an interesting time with a lot of change and a lot of questions. This report raises for me all kinds of questions that I certainly don't have the answer to. Um, but at the same time, I think there's a lot of excitement about what these digital methods and digital means of publication will mean for the future of humanities scholarship um, beyond some of the kind of innovative work that ECDS is already doing. So thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.